What's the worst part of having a child? The days drag on, but the years fly by. The fingerprints on the wall get higher and higher. Dot, and then they disappear altogether. Dot, my mom. When I was 19 we moved out of the house I had grown up in, moved in with my mom when I was 3 and my sister 4. Before moving out we had to paint all the walls including the one on which for the past 16 years my mom had regularly marked the height of my sister and me. For some reason she insisted on painting over it herself but couldn't stop sobbing while doing it, and for quite some time after. This is why I bought a piece of wood. I put it on the side of my bookcase so that when we move I just get to take that piece of wood with me even if that bookcase gets destroyed. Having to take care of a sick child when you are also sick. For me that has been the most challenging part so far. Having to deal with their total lack of self-preservation. They are creative and come up with all kinds of ways to try and kill themselves, keeping ahead of the game is exhausting. My son is three. He has this globe with name tabs that go into the continents. He was having a nap today and we told him he had to put the continents away. He tried to swallow one of the name tags. Like right in front of us, fired it in his mouth and began to choke. I'm glad we were both there. That globe has gone away for a while. Just another reason flat earthers will outreproduce the rest of us. I'm only 9 years in, but so far it's been the sleep deprivation. Hands down. Ada, I'm not still sleep deprived. My kids sleep great now at nearly 9-5. But that was the hardest part of parenthood for me so far. My kids are 14, 18 yo. Your kids become champion sleepers in their tweens. Bellowing that they must sleep in on Saturday and Sunday. Therese more whiplash too. They don't want me to cook for them. They just want another top ramen. They don't want to play. They are busy text messaging w friends. The sudden lack of codependency is bittersweet tbh. Knee deep in dependency, 2 and 4. It's weird to think about how sad it will be when it stops despite being desperate for them to be independent. On the bad days, I try to remember this. I try to remember I won't know the last time I will pick my kids up, the last time they need me to put on a piece of clothing, I won't know the last time of any of these menial tasks I do every day that feel cumbersome and frustrating sometimes. If I'm fortunate, it will be then growing up into independence. If I'm not, well, no one is guaranteed tomorrow. On the bad days, I try to remember. It goes so ducking fast. My three-year-old today turned she looked at me from the dinner table and said mama, I don't need a sippy cup anymore. I'm a big girl. It didn't really hit me until writing this comment that it's another example of what passes generally unacknowledged and quickly forgotten. When I'm at the end of my life I will not regret the dishes waiting to get done, or not getting more work done, but I will regret the moments I took for granted that so many are robbed of. Thanks for coming to my existential crisis TED Talk. Pardon me while I go ball my eyes out and snuggle my two-year-old and one-month-old. Worrying about how the outside world will treat them. I will never forget the first time I saw another child being mean to my daughter and having to keep it together and remind myself that it was a child. Shit's difficult. When I learned that some ten-year-olds were playing keep away with my four-year-old's hat while my six-year-old tried to get it back for him that was a shitty day. Six-year-old was a boss for sticking up for their brother. There's no describing the feeling of seeing that shit. I'm not my nephew's biggest fan, he can be a bit of an asshole to my son himself because they see each other daily and act as brothers. There's a four-year age difference between them. I've never been more proud of him than the day he stood up to a fellow classmate and straight kicked him out of his birthday party for bullying my kid. He spent that whole day slipping up and accidentally introducing him as his little brother. They're pretty much siblings which means no one can bully so and so but me. When people ask me this I say dot you know those video games where you have to escort a character to a destination without them being attacked dot that's parenting dot those missions are a pain in the ass. And they walk at half your speed so you have to keep circling back for them. Spot on. They walk faster than you but run slower. Or walk way slower than suddenly sprint forward without warning when there's a hazard right ahead. God this is too true. Doddle 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 where are you come back? Doddle get stuck on a small tuft of grass. Doddle ooh a landmine sprint. Watching them make the same mistakes you did even though you told them not to make those mistakes. Little Jimmy. If you borrow a bunch of money, those people are going to want it back and if they don't get it back they'll take stuff you won't want taken. To add to this, they are going to watch you. 
Copy some of your habits and you will start to realize how annoying those habits are. Nothing like reevaluate yourself after disciplining the you out of your child. The constant anxiety that you are doing enough to shape them to make good choices, a good life, be a good person and for them to have the life they deserve. I think most children learn way more from how their parents live their life, than from what their parents try to actively teach them. So as long as you love your kids and live a reasonable and healthy life, you're probably doing okay already. If they are born with severe disabilities, you will need to take care of them or make plans for their care for as long as they are alive. It's heartbreaking, many marriages don't make it. My utmost respect to parents of special needs children. My family and I run care homes for adults with disabilities. We empathize with you. Some parents just drop them off at our doorstep with a suitcase and never look back, not even a visit ever. Some of the parents are in their 50s or 70s who never had a break and never wanted them in a care home because of the guilt they would feel leaving them with someone else. But after a certain point, they physically and mentally can't handle it. To those parents, I hope there are options and programs where you live. Just know, there are homes and caregivers who devote their lives to make sure you and your loved ones are in good hands. We are governed by regional centers and the state so rest assured we feed them well, have really nice housing conditions, integrate them into the community and act as an extension of their family. It's nice to have their families visit once in a while to see their loved ones are in good hands and you can tell they've made peace and are sleeping well with their decision. I wish I had enough coins for an award right now. I worked both with severally and multiple disabled teens and disabled adults. And I've seen patients that were dropped of like a dog at a shelter and the parents never contacted them again. But also parents, grandparents and siblings who fought so hard to take care of their family member at home and it was just too much who felt so guilty for putting them into a facility like ours. And they really really shouldn't be. They deserve and need breaks and having a own life. A care home can be the best solution for everyone. They have a chance at living their life while their family member is taken care of by professionals. Sometimes they even like living in a facility better. They are surrounded by others who understand them. They don't feel alone with their disabilities and for some it's an important step of growing up to move out. And when they go home on the weekends or for vacation they can enjoy their time together even more. I wish every parent of a child with a disability that they have enough resources to deal with the situation in a way that's good for everybody. And I wish you and your family all the best, what you do is amazing and I don't think you can hear that enough. Losing them. I lost my 14-year-old daughter to suicide in 2020. It's the worst pain and you can't imagine it until you are in it. It'll never be the same and if I didn't have my son I'm not sure I'd still be here. The worry that I'm a bad parent that's doing things wrong. I've observed that parents who have the capability to worry if they are doing things wrong are generally good parents. It's the ones that are 100% certain that their way is correct that I worry about. I too have these worries but we just do the best we can go with the knowledge we have at the time. I know we'll do things different with my second compared to my first but we all just have to be willing to learn along the way. My son is 7 and my daughter is almost 2. I actually have guilt that I'm going to be older and more seasoned with her, I feel like my son had to live through me figuring out how to be a mom and my daughter gets the revised version lol. Please try not to have guilt over that. As the oldest of seven children with a great mom, I can say I'm very happy that my younger siblings have an even better version than I did. You have to feed them like every day. You can try let them grass feed on their own if you have a house with lawn around. Free range babies.